So how does a 2014 MacBook Air right here perform in 2022? That's what we're here to find out. All right, welcome back to the channel. So if you follow my channel, you'll know I did a video on this a few weeks ago. And check out that video. I'll have it linked in the description. It's basically going to show you the overall quality of what I picked up here. Just the outside, the ports, all that kind of stuff, the screen. It's really a, a nice system. I got this for $179. So check out that video too if you want to know where I got it from. But I got it for $179. Bucks. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the quality is it was a great A, so it's really a good system for the price. But now this video is going to be more about how does this actually perform uh, eight or nine years later. So this is 2022, this is a 2014. So now this video is going to be about the performance here. And I want to kind of tell you what this video is going to actually go through. So I'm first of all going to go through some tests with you just to show you how this performs. I'm going to go through the load time, you know, when you boot it up, I'm going to go through black magic for the disk. I'm going to show you opening browsers and pages and stuff, just basic tasks like that. Just how fast is this? How snappy is this? Then I'm going to go through stuff like um, 1080p versus 4K. Can you even do 4K on this? I'm going to show you the rendering times and all that. Show you the quality of the webcam here as well. So I'll go through this list here. I have a whole bunch of stuff, the battery. So we'll go through all that. And if you want to know that in 2014, stay with me here. So we'll kind of jump into it, but I just wanted to kind of set up the video. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to say, who is this for? Do I recommend it, number one? And who would it be for? What's the perfect use case for this? So that's kind of what we're going to accomplish in this video. Let's get into it. All right, so just really quickly the specs on this, I guess I can't say it too quick without talking too fast, but this is gonna be the, again, the 2014 11 inch. This is the 11 inch uh, MacBook Air. And if I look here, it's, it's gonna be the i5-4260U CPU. It's a Haswell 1.4 gigahertz burstable or boostable to 2.7. This has got eight gigs of RAM in it, and the reason that's important really is gonna be because don't ever get four in these things. Always get eight gigs of RAM if you're gonna get an older air like this. It performs way better, so eight gigs is key. Um, this has got a, what is a 1366 by 768, 11.6. It's actually 11.6 inches. So the resolution doesn't look that great, 1366, 768, but on that screen, it's actually more than enough. It's also a glossy screen, so beautiful there. Um, and it does have, uh, the battery, it says nine hours, but it really gets me about five, and this is after eight or nine years. So, and you can, the good thing is you can change these batteries out. So that's a great thing there as well for about $50 or so. And then the last thing is it's about 2.3 pounds here. So that's not too bad. And let's see if there's anything else I'm missing here. I don't think so. The Intel Graphics 5000 with one point, it's integrated graphics with a one point uh, gigabyte VRAM. So here's the setup of this thing. And uh, I just wanted to kind of show people what it's all about. Now this retailed for about, I think around a thousand bucks, 900 to a thousand bucks back in 2014 but now 127 bucks. So let's get into the tests here just to show people what this thing's all about. Obviously the MacBook M1 here is gonna be way better. I have videos on this too, check those out. Um, check out my channel, I have over 400 and something videos, so check those out. But I'm just gonna concentrate on this today. I'm gonna to share my screen here and we're gonna go through some basic tests with you. So let me know uh, at the end of the video what you think of this thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through the test then show you exactly who, who should buy this thing. All right, so for the first test, we're gonna jump here. We're gonna kind of jump back and forth, but mostly I'm gonna do a screenshot. So the first thing I wanna do is black magic. Um, I'm gonna open that up. You can see it's opened here on my screen. Let's go ahead and test this really quickly. So this is gonna be the writes. They're gonna be a little over 300 for the writes on these older systems. And then the reads are gonna be almost 700. Look at that, 679. So not too bad, right? For a system this old, still really snappy. That's key. Obviously, I don't think these come in spinning drives, but I always get an SSD. I don't even think they do these, these errors, but never get a just a spinning drive or a normal hard drive. Always have to get SSD, eight gigs of RAM. So that's that's kind of the first test. Um, now I wanna show you a couple things. So look at my screen. Now opening a browser is so smooth in this. And this is 2014, mind you. I'm gonna go down here to click on Safari. Click right there, one bounce. Just basically one bounce, the browser opens up. Obviously your, your, your internet connection might matter here as well. I'm gonna click on the Apple website here and you can see here it's gonna load in. So everything's very snappy. Look at nothing's kind of loading after the fact. It's already loaded in. And again, that has something to do with your, your internet but also just the rendering of the graphics in here and how it actually handles websites. It's very snappy. Any site you go to is like that. I mean, it's, it's surprisingly crazy. Um, when you click on something, bing, it just instantly opens it up. It's, it's not like old Windows computers by any stretch. So so, you know, it's, it's actually really nice. Um, the next test, let me just see here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down Safari just not to mess with things here. And let's just say you wanna do a basic document. Let's go to pages actually. So watch this, one, two, three, click. It's gonna bounce once. So now we're waiting a couple seconds there. I'm gonna go to new document. 
what is that, one, one more second, and then just double click on the blank document, and it opens up, the, the, and you can start your document here. Um, so you can see that is actually very snappy. It's just as fast as a modern, probably, you know, Windows PC right now. Very, very snappy. No problem with creating documents and things like that. Um, directions, and, and let me just delete this. Directions and other things, you know, if I open up maps, again, take a quick peek here. You know, a lot of times older computers drag when you drag the mouse. So that it took two bounces. It's opened up maps. You can see it here. But if you drag the map around, you can see how fluid it is. It's not like stuttering or just trying to load things in. Again, internet matters here, but this is the CPU and also kind of the graphics behind it for such an old system it still works you know really really beautiful um, so those are those three things now what I wanted to do kind of you know is go through some video editing this is not made for video editing but I'm going to show you that these are some surprising things that I got here so the first test let me go ahead and just show you I'm going to go back to my screen and let's just go ahead and open up if I can get to it let's go ahead and open up iMovie right there I clicked on it you're going to see about how fast it is some older systems take a while this takes it's thinking about it, it took what three seconds maybe not too bad now in here here's a this is a 1080p file test and I'm gonna click on this and you can see in here let me go ahead and actually I didn't click on it there it is so I clicked on it and you can see these are all gonna be let me go to my media these are all 1080p shots off a 1080p camera and you can see in here, look, look at the, when I scrub this, you can see how smooth it is. I mean, it may not show up on your computers because of the format I'm filming this in, but it's, it's just butter smooth on 1080p. And the beauty of this is you can do full 1080p editing. Uh, I use a Panasonic G7. I did, let me see here, this, this, this video here was four minutes and 17 seconds, and it rendered it in only three minutes and 58 seconds. So less time to render the video than what the video is. And that's 1080p. It's for, totally capable if you can see the screen here, it's a small screen, but that's, that's pretty surprising. So if, then I go back and like, can this thing do 4K? And just to prove to you, I wanna show you the files here if you look at my computer. So in here I have some 4K edits, and if I click on one and I click get info here, these are actually, you can see, I'll have to zoom in on it so you can see, but it's 3840 by 2160. It's full AAC H.264 and a whole bunch of shots are in here. Now these are basic edits, um, but at the end of the day, I mean, this is a 2014 system that's very, very basic, running a 1.4 gigahertz, and it can do this stuff. So here's the 4K edit. Let me go in here, I'm gonna open this up. Here's these 4K clips here. Again, not a complicated edit, but if you look here, the timeline again, scrubbing is, it's not really dropping any frames. I mean, look at this, it's pretty smooth. I can go through transitions. Here's a transition, you can see it, that's just fade to black. But even when it goes, you know, it's a very basic edit, but, but everything, even the words coming in, there's no drop frames on a 4K video here. And again, I can only say out of a, out of a Panasonic, I haven't pre-rendered anything or nothing like that. So everything works really well. And then obviously this one here, let me see here, this is a two minute and 18 second video clip here. Uh, you know, And when I render it, it took, let me see here, seven minutes and 18 seconds. So it takes, 17, so it takes over three times as long, but it can do it, that's the key. It can actually do it. It sounds like a jet engine. I don't know how much I would do it on 4K because it does get a little hot here, but it can actually do 4K. So how does this look? This is the 2014 MacBook Air, the 11 inch. Doesn't look bad, does it? Video quality is pretty good in 2022 for a 2014 laptop. It's only 720p. What about the voice here? I have the microphone as well I'm using. You probably wanna hook up an extra mic, but that's my only complaint really. Not bad, right? All right, and again, the battery. Let me just talk about the battery really quickly. So I get about five hours of use. That's with the video editing and browsing and everything else. Again, super crazy. I only, ha I think when I bought this, I had like 200 cycles on it, but that's still amazing for being that old, and I don't think it's a new battery. The good thing is on these old systems is you can change the battery yourself for 50 bucks. You can find them on Amazon, go out and find the battery and just do that. So that's not a problem like some of the newer ones like this one where you have to go to and get it serviced to get it changed and stuff. These ones are very easy. All right, so if you're sitting around on a lazy afternoon in your family room or something, just like I am in this shot, and you're trying to just look up stuff, is this worth it? And I'm gonna say yes, and let me explain who this is for. Just wait, just wait till the end here. So for 179 bucks, this is a no-brainer. This is a great laptop. Um, I recommend spending 50 bucks more when you find these models just to get the better quality. I got a great A. I mean, I got mine for 179, but that was a deal. If you get it for like two something, just to get the quality so there's no scratches or nothing on the system, it just makes the experience that much better. And then you can resell it for a lot more later too. So always try to get the quality up. Don't get ones that are totally destroyed. 
So is this for video editors? No, I mean, this is not the best video editing machine. Can it be done in a pinch? You just saw it could. Basic edits, you may have to kind of dumb down your videos and stuff like that, but it works fine. In 1080p, it does it in less time than video, and if you do uh, 4K, it's gonna take three to four times as long, and it gets hot. So things you have to consider, I wouldn't do like a, an hour edit on this thing, 4K, probably not, but if you're doing short edits and you need it in a pinch, definitely so. All right, so let's just wrap this up. So who is this actually gonna be for? Who is this targeted for? Is it for a new person that just wants to get into Mac OS for 179 bucks? And I'm gonna say no, and there's a reason for that. Obviously, it's because you have to know what you're doing to get the OS updated and all that stuff. That's a little bit of work, and it's probably not the best experience. I would just get an M1 MacBook Air. You're gonna be happy. I mean, if you're a new Mac user, you're gonna be happy with this no matter what. One of the best laptops you can buy. This is like a tinkering device. It's so good. It's so, you know, it, it's really fun to use and it, you can, can, it brings back some feelings from when you had these in, when you were younger, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it still does basic tasks. So is this for someone that has a Mac already and just wants to use it for basic stuff like just looking at mail or just, you know, browsing websites, things like that? Definitely, that's a good option for those people. And, uh, but the best option I thought of, I usually give these to my sister's kids because I use them for my channel. I buy these cheaper ones and then I actually, you know, obviously put the videos, make a bunch of videos and then I end up kind of giving them as a gift or something. I know I shouldn't give these old ones, but they like them. So anyways, this one I may keep and I'll tell you why. It's because this is the perfect travel laptop, right? I take this to Germany with me and it gets stolen or lost, you know, you're at a thousand bucks. You take this thing over here and it's 179. And not only that, I mean, that's still a lot of money, but still. Not only that though, it can still do video editing in a pinch. It can do all your email. It can browse all the wet red, you know, the restaurants and the maps and everything. Everything's fine on this thing. And it's, it's so small. It's actually smaller than this one, actually lighter than this one as well. So it's a perfect travel laptop. So that's what I recommend it for is for people that might want one for a burner laptop, a travel laptop, or for like a small kid that might destroy it anyway. This is a perfect one. All right, anyways, thanks again for watching, and I hope this helps people just decide, like, should you buy these things? I mean, you know, for video editing, no, really, but it can do it. For other just basic tasks, yes. It's not gonna be as fast as this by any means. This is way better over here, but if you wanna just get a basic burner laptop, it's totally worth it. Eight gigs of RAM is a must, SSD is a must, and uh, this is the 11 inch. They make, I think, a 13 inch too. The 13 inch is even faster than this one, I think, as far as the CPU and stuff. I, or they're very comparable, but I think it's a little bit faster. But still, these are good. Go for quality, you can resell them later. It also makes you happy to have something that looks good instead of it being all scratched up and stuff. So spend the extra 50 bucks. That's all I can say in this video, we'll wrap it up. Talk to everybody soon. Check out my channel. I have over 450 videos now, and I like most of them are Apple related. Go back and check them out. Check the old video on this too. I did a video on this thing over here. I've done videos all over the place. So check them all out. So support me if I can. Helps me make other ones. Peace.